Hello, and welcome to part two of me showing off my carpenters. Yes, all that wood grain, just... No, what I mean by, by carpenters is in Karen and Richard Carpenter. Now, I realise sometimes these kind of things are kind of like, oh, I've got this record. No, it's just, it's not really like that at all. It's just sort of showing, it's me showing what I have which is probably that much in comparison to what some fans do have. Um, so where mine is that <laughs> where mine is that big, others are that big. Oh look, hang on. Yes, there we are. And and sometimes the fish can be that big. But anyway, without further ado, here is me showing off some more of my carpenters. No hinges, no rusty hinges. So firstly, uh, this is the single two. Australian pressing of Kind of Hush. Originally done by the Herman's Hermits. Or Herman's Hermits, there is a kind of hush. Shh. I thought he sings that. There's a kind of hush. <laughs> Makes him sound like a vacuum cleaner, doesn't it? Hello, this is Herman Vacuum. <laughs> Sounds like a German. Isn't it? And this is the, I will say, international copy of Kind of Hush because I actually can't read the print on the, on the, um, on here. It's way too small for for me. I need a magnifying glass. Absolutely need a magnifying glass. So these days, I probably need a magnifying glass uh, for yeah. I'm just <laughs> What was I talking about before? <laughs> Next. And this is the Australian pressing to... Oh, oops. <laughs> the paper thing stuck to the plastic. Uh, so yeah, this is the Australian pressing to I Need to Be In Love. One of Karen's favourite songs, if not the favourite song of Karen's. I read somewhere that Richard hated the video to it. Just check it out on YouTube. It's really cheesy. But apparently Richard nicknamed it the Love Plane. Yes. Instead of... Yeah, it, it's, it really is horribly cheesy. Just check it out. It's there. And this is a German copy of I Need To Be In Love. And no, that's not flaring from light. That's flaring from... Oh, there we go. Hang on. That's light flare sort of actually no it's just the reflection of, of this so yes that's a german german copy with sans reflection yes upon reflection it's a german copy and next up we have a very strange choice for a single goofus i don't mind the song but as far as it being a single goes well Oh, they were starting to struggle a bit, so perhaps they thought, oh, we'll just release something different and quirky and see if it, see what happens. But here is a German copy of Goofus, backed with Breaking Up Is Hard To Do. Karma, karma, down, dooby doo, down, down. Yes. What did he say just then? It'll be in the bloopers. <laughs> there's, there's bloopers. It's guaranteed to be bloopers with me. I just did one. But, as a curiosity, Japan decided to release Breaking Up Is Hard To Do as a single. So, for whatever reason, obviously they thought, yes, this is a good idea for a single. So, next up is the Australian pressing of All You Get From Love Is A Love Song. Uh, because the best love songs are written with a broken arm. Well, that's what I used to think the lyric was anyway. I know it's not, it's a broken heart. The best love songs are written with a broken heart, not a broken arm. It's one of those uh, hold me closer Tony Danza type things for me. Uh, we should be. And next is the Australian pressing for Calling Occupants of Interplanetary Craft. Yes, three minutes taken out of that. Well, to. But that was that was one of the things that was done back then. 
uh, things would be edited down for, for singles like I'm a Stranger Here by Five Man Electric Band, This Song by George Harrison, Never Before by Deep Purple, um, You Make Me Feel Like Dancing by Leo Sayer, <laughs> among many others. And this is the Australian pressing to Sweet Sweet Smile. And this was the one, if you saw an interview with Karen when they were talking about going on Star Parada, where they where it was like one camera that pretty much didn't do anything was was that song. So yeah, sweet sweet smile with them getting a yeehaw country. So give your sweet sweet smile every day. And as an example of how bland some of the carpenters' picture sleeves are, look at that. That just screams artistic phantasmagorica, doesn't it? I don't know. So. so I love Bobber. But I I th I think that one I think that one's from Holland. Uh, not a hundred percent sure because sometimes it's either hard for me to tell or hard for me to read. <laughs> but at least they kind of made sure that it was uh, perfectly in line. They just didn't remove the lines to make it. Yeah. And next up, I've got a bit out of order here. Me getting out of order. Never. This is the Dutch copy of Calling Occupants using a photo from the A Kind of Hush period. Yeah, that makes sense. Nice kind of pukey brown, isn't it? Mm. I just think Karen's here. With, with ones like that, I can always change the colour. So there's this. Or this, or this, or that, or now the next one, which I won't change the colour of, it's alright. Oh yeah, um, yet another in the long run of very bland Carpenter's picture sleeve singles, at least the fancy. But yes, this single is from the USA. And back to with Merry Christmas, Darling, which my understanding is that Karen re-recorded the vocal to that for the Christmas album. I'm going through. This is a, an interesting one. I was, it's an American pressing. Yeah. It's a mono stereo promo of I Believe You. I guess that was for radio stations or something like that. So I guess the stereo was for FM and the mono was for AM. I, I don't know how the mono stereo things worked, actually. <laughs> and the amazing thing is that it doesn't have any yuckies. So yeah, that's mono stereo of, of I Believe You. And then we have the Australian pressing of I Believe You. Obviously for an album that never eventuated because of Karen and Richard taking their time off. And then the track wound up being included on the Made in America LP anyway. And speaking of Made in America, we have Touch Me When We're Dancing. Touch Me When We're Dancing. It's, it's amazing how they make, make it sound so innocent, yet I suspect it was. <laughs> it says, Touch Me When We're Dancing, the comeback single. And if I wanted to be really perverse, that's a poor choice of words to put together, isn't it? Then we have a Japanese pressing of Beechwood 45789. I actually said those numbers without stumbling. That's a small miracle. Uh, this is the Australian pressing for Beechwood 45789. Goodness me. The job they've done on those photos... Oh. I mean, they've made Richard look like a Ken doll there. And again, like I said, this is the US pressing of Touch Me When We're Dancing. Same front. So yeah, like I said, all the, a lot of the pictures are the same. Oh, this is a bit of a ver weird variation of Beechwood 45789. This is making them look face to face. Yeah, so that particular copy was from Holland. The Australian pressing to those good old dreams. The beautiful purple festival happening there. 
It's wall-to-wall -wall festival, that one. Uh, this one, I want you back in my life again. I think so. I think this. I think that particular copy is from Brazil. Or well, at least they've used a proper photo, because at least at least Richard doesn't look so. At least they don't look quite so plastic and as they do in those other photos. Now this, as you can tell from the price tag, is a British version of Now. So there we go, 50p. So you can honestly, actually that would be an interesting one in the shops, wouldn't it? Now for 50p. What? Now for 50p. Well, what now? Now. Shut up and do the next single, hey? That's what you're all thinking. Oh. Stop it with your corny humour. Really? They've got to grow in a field first, don't they? And this is... Mm, stuck in the cover. <coughs> oh. It is too. It's stuck. <laughs> oh, come on. This is actually stark. What's going on here? Oh, God. Oh. Now I know why it was um, plastic wrapped. It's got a stamp on. Yeah, it's got a stamp on the back, CBS, using the 1975 thing. Hmm. Not entirely flattering, though, is it? So, yes, that's now, and I th reckon that's from Brazil. Now, and now, we have the Australian pressing for Make Believe It's Your First Time. First done by Karen on her solo album, and they decided, oh, that's not too bad. So it made the posthumous album. And there's a couple of other pressings of Make Believe It's Your First Time. Uh, again, this one. Uh, again, I think this one's from Brazil. So, oh yeah, I've got to be careful with those. The, the glue for some of these, because it's, it's actually quite a heavy cardboard. All these, all these ones from here are quite heavy cardboard. This is the pressing from the USA of Make Believe It's Your First Time. So there we go, that's that one. Got a very sombre looking Richard on the back. In actual fact, that photo, I noticed looking at some of the photos from the solo album sessions, they, the photos they've used for this is actually from that session, from her solo album thing. So it's interesting that those photos should be used for that. So this is another version of Make Believe It's Your First Time. It was uh, released to coincide with the Yesterday Once More double album set. And that's from 1985. So, yeah. Oh my god, that's so random. And lucky last is the UK re-release of Rainy Days and Mondays, back with Goodbye to Love. This mix of rainy days and Mondays, Richard decided, oh, I don't want those strings, so he removes the strings. From the... Uh, here's the arranger, it's his prerogative. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and, um, and all the edits that would have taken place as well. And there will be others along those lines, who knows what artist could be next. I don't know, I'll just have a look and go, oh yeah, that one will do, that's alright. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, please do thumbsies and things like that. Oh, I'm on the hitch of it. So anyway, alright, you take care, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.